the Pop from the Crips interview series, where we interview directors and producers of the best horror shorts out there. Today, we have a very special guest on our show. Please welcome Peter Hatch. Peter, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Oh, man. It's awesome to have you on, man. Pleasure is all mine. <laughs> Peter is the founder of the Deformed Lunchbox channel on YouTube. Please check it out. This is an awesome, awesome channel on YouTube. Thanks. He... He is the creator of the fantastic horror short. It's called Make Me a Sandwich. It was made last year, and it is one of my favorite three-minute short, short horror movies. Could you just tell the fans a little bit about this, this film and, you know, where you kind of got this idea from? Um, I mean, to be honest, I don't really know where the idea come, came. It kind of just popped in my head. Um, but... It, it, yeah, we, I wrote it probably over two years ago. So it was just kind of a slowly tweaking it. And, and uh, originally, like, it wasn't going to have sen senior people in it. It was going to have younger people. <laughs> and we had a different envisionment of the, of the, the ending uh, shock reveal. I don't want to spoil it. So it kind of, it's kind of just like the idea pops in. And then over time, you just tweak and kind of finesse and find, way, find the theme in it and find, find kind of what works. So it's kind of like a, an ongoing development. That's awesome. Did, did you have a lot of locations? Did you do one location? Was it a studio that you shot it in? Uh, we had two locations. Um, one, one of them was the, de the cinematographer's, uh, at the time, his house. Right. And then the closet was actually done at my, in my mother's house in her closet. <laughs> so, I love that closet. <laughs> I know. It, it, it was, it's actually really, really small. Like we, we had the camera in the closet and we had to like run a cable out so we could watch it from the other room. Like we weren't even able to operate the camera while we were. Yeah, I was it. wondering, uh, how many people did you have in that closet at one point in time? Uh, no, just one. Like we had the, just the one wow. in there, set the camera up. We'd look at the monitor in the other room. And then when we had it all set up, we, we just had, we rolled the whole series of that. Like it, that whole scene is just one long clip. We just pressed record once and we had to do take after take. How many That's takes awesome. did, it, did you go through? Um, I don't know, but I know the scene where she brings in the sandwich to him. Uh, we must have done like 60 takes. Wow. Um, <laughs> this is a lot, I know. But it was just one of those things where we knew that there'd be like an escalating uh, tension with her character. So we just wanted to make sure we got it like all different variety. Right. Um, yeah, I think, I think I kind of directed it a little bit like a commercial where we just like overshot got tons of variety right. we had it's three minutes but we shot over three days wow yeah so did, we had lots of time did you have a lot of different like gags ready to set up like you did a lot of different shots were they planned did you kind of like go on the fly and say try this try that while you were on set not really i mean everything is so planned like we okay. have storyboard shot lists we had wow. a production designer on this so we knew what the gags were and like for example, I, I mean, I don't want to spoil it right now, but the ending, I'll call it the shock reveal at the ending. Um, like that was the very first shot we got. And we spent like two hours just setting that shot up. So we, it, it very planned. So yeah, not, on the day of shooting, usually, you know, you can find some nuance in performance, but I, you're, not, you're not really like coming up with ideas, I don't think. Right. I, I, I felt that the cinematography was like very colorful. It, it kind of like reminded me of a, uh, a Tales from the Crypt type of episode. And it, it was it was so well done and so well shot. I don't want to spoil the ending either, but. Well, there is, there is actually, um, uh, what is it? T there's a Tales from the Crypt movie, uh, one of the movies where uh, it's called Where's My Cake, I think. That's, okay. It's very similar to Make Me a Sandwich. I hadn't seen it before, but if you watch it, it's about a, a, a dead man basically wanting his birthday cake and his, his like kids, I think, are hear his voice and he's saying, where's my cake? Where's my cake? So <laughs> it's pretty similar, but um, yeah, the cinematography I thought was great. That was um, my cinematographer, Matt Hamilton. And uh, when we went to kind of color it, I did the, the color myself. We like kind of wanted it to look like it was rotting, like overly colorful, like mm -hmm. two orange, little spots of green and purple, like almost giving it like a saturated food rotting look um so i don't know i would say you guys definitely like achieved that it looked like it was rotting 
Good. I liked it. <laughs> yeah. well, what did you guys shoot on? What camera? I was a C300 Mark II. Okay. And then we had Canon Cine lenses. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. It's a nice looking short film. It you is. get a lot out of that DSLR camera, yeah. Yeah, Matt's great too. I mean, he's he's really good at just like, you know, centering frames and like we he's mm -hmm. yeah, we spent a lot of time making sure every frame was was nice, you know. Awesome, man. Could you could you tell us a little bit about the casting about uh how you got the uh the woman to play Marcy and and the old man in the uh in the Okay. Short? Um, well, the old man, <laughs> I actually edited a music video that he was in a bunch of years back. And then we casted him in another short on our channel called uh, I Hate Halloween. Okay. Uh, you should check that one out. It's funny. So I knew he was the right, I knew his name's Peter Hodgins. I knew he was perfect for the role. So it, we didn't even hold an audition or any casting. It was just, Peter, got to do this. And he's like, okay, I'm in. Um, for, <laughs> for Marcy, it was kind of weird. Like I, I put up a casting call for, for that role as well. And she responded to me and, uh, her name was Marcy already. Right. Like so I, well, it's not her, her real name, but it was like her maiden name or something. So the email came in with the character name in the email. And I was like, that's a weird sign. Mm -hmm. And then she, um, also like just the way she wrote the email, she, she said something like dysfunctionally yours at the bottom, uh, Anne, and I was just like, just, I'm like, this woman just gets it. So I actually called her and we had like a really long conversation. And after that, I, I just kind of knew. So, yeah, she was amazing. She reminded me of somebody who could be on a Hallmark card, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> <Like a> contemporary <laughs> bringing the, uh, the turkey in for the rest of the family. I, I think that's why it worked. And first, you know, what, what was great about this film um, was that even though it was so short, I felt right away sympathy for her, mm -hmm. which was great. You know, you had, a, you had a lot of, you had horror, comedy, sympathy, everything like thrown into three, well, put in, well executed into three minutes is, is amazing. Is it three minutes exact or is it around? I think it's three minutes exactly. Okay. I think you're right. Yeah. I think I, my, my kind of feeling with short films is like you just don't have time to you know, have long openings or like, you know, slow building shots. Like we're living in a, you know, billions of videos on YouTube, right. tons of ADHD world. So that's like, you'll notice the very first shot, he's screaming, where's my sandwich? Cause <laughs> you just want to get people captivated right away. I have that's this kind of, um, quote that I use with the other, with the team on Deform Lunchbox. And I say with, with writing horror shorts, it's like a, an analogy to like, a murder where we you have to hook the audience mm. like with a with like a I know what you did last summer hook them right and then you have to twist it <laughs> so like, that's kind of like the uh, metaphor we use for how we write our, our short films uh, how many uh, iterations of the script did this go through was it always three minutes or was there a longer version because there's very little exposition there's actually pretty very little tight. dialogue yeah, yeah it's very tight and you get the point across immediately like a tales from the crypt like you're saying yeah, I mean, I, I think it was always about three pages. Uh, okay. I really like the short, short format. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I mean, and also just for budget, right? It keeps the budget down and lets us, it's like if our budget, our budget, uh, like per minute goes up. Like if you have a six minute movie versus a three minute movie, you have double the budget per minute in a three minute movie. So that's kind of what was my thought on that. So. Awesome. I, without, again, spoiling it, could you tell me who kind of did the special effects? Haley Pace. Okay. She's a production Excellent. designer in the city. She's great. Yeah, like, she did oh. a bunch. She had all these all this research done on, on decomposition. <laughs> 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 so she, she's great. Yeah, she's awesome. That's awesome, man. And, and did you take this film into the film festival uh, circuit? Mm. Okay. Can you tell me so, a little bit about that? Yeah, it got into about a dozen festivals, wow. um, including Toronto After Dark, which was like, that was a huge, huge moment for us. Uh, I've like submitted to Toronto After Dark for a long time and been denied. So getting into that was really cool. Um, and yeah, I was in like a, a handful of festivals, a few in uh, like Europe and Singapore uh, and across Canada and the US. So. That's awesome, man. And like to the people out there that are trying to uh, be aspiring directors and they're trying to get their films out there. And uh, what do you have to, to say to them? You know, cause like I, me personally, I, I have two films right now. I'm trying to submit them into different film festivals and I've gotten into film festivals and I've gotten denied a lot. And uh, 
you know, sometimes you've got to deal with like a lot of failure or rejection, but like, then something comes along, like make me a sandwich. And, you know, it, 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 it right. The ends justify the means. I don't know, you know, what your story is or if you've ever been like, like you were saying rejected before, but I know the hardships of it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of part of it that you, you have to be ready to get rejected. Um, I mean, I've, and also just a little bit of understanding what the festival circuit like requires. Like, you know, a lot, I meet a lot of filmmakers who want to submit to Toronto or TIFF or Sundance or Khan. And it's like, that's, that's like pretty elite. So it's good to kind of know what range your movie is and kind of being, kind of being aware of how your movie really sits, you know? Right. Um, so, you know, what we kind of did was we submitted to bigger festivals first, like Toronto After Dark. And then after kind of did the bigger festivals I applied for a bunch of smaller festivals so you kind of it's kind of like you peak and then you get to smaller festivals and and sometimes if it doesn't get into those bigger ones you just kind of go to the next one down the next one down um it's I, yeah I guess rejection's part of it you just gotta I know man it's tough through. sometimes it's hard that like uh you're getting rejected and while you're getting rejected from one film festival and you're trying to write a script for another one if it's horror <laughs> drama and it, sometimes it's it's hard to keep going and you know, when I see, like I said, when I see films like, like yours, like this one in particular, it makes me want to go on because it's like, it's awesome. Like, because when the success hits, so you really have like a home run of a short film, it, it just makes like somebody like me inspired or somebody out there that's listening to like, you know, if just we want to keep making these films because we and, love and you horror. Write, we, you write your own short films too, right, Chris? Yeah, we did. I actually, I wrote, we, I wrote the story for one of my last ones. It's called Family Bond, and he, Rob was the, uh, he wrote the, uh, the screenplay for it. Great. So uh, we kind of like co-wrote it. I, I had the story idea, and then we kind of, we, I co-wrote it, and then he wrote the rest of it. One, so, one thing uh, that worked. I find with uh, writing is it's, it's like really nice to have a long period of time to sit on it. Right. So like with Make Me a Sandwich, we wrote it in, oh man, like 2015. And we were right about to shoot it with a whole different uh, approach and a lower budget and like younger actors. And it was like a, something happened that, that delayed it. And then we had like two years to just kind of like let it age like a fine wine. So I, I'm a kind of of this philosophy now that if you let your script age, like in your mind, you can kind of it just gets better. Like you'll find little things and you'll like realize things in the theme or what you're trying to say that. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm a big proponent of like, I've, I've have over 20 shorts written and like, they're all sort of tweaking at all times. So time is your friend. So let me ask you a question on that. Um, so when you went back to the script, how, how different was it when you went back and did another draft after you sat on it for like about a year? Uh, surprisingly not that different, but the one thing that like there, the big change was that originally it was much younger actors. Okay. And then kind of, I, I really thought about, I'm like, you know, there really is a theme here of marital abuse, like elderly marital abuse. It's not really something that's touched on very much and it's definitely out there. So I think that just kind of light bulb went off. But as far as like the, the main beats, it's pretty much exactly the same. One of the, one of the other things I, I added, but I don't think it came through was that um, she's knitting in the closet, but she's actually knitting the same sweater she's wearing. So it's kind oh, of wow. supposed to represent, it's supposed to represent uh, her uh, kind of stuck in a cycle, on a, on a loop. In like the, a the definition of insanity kind of? Thing. Yeah, and like she's wearing one that's kind of like haggard and, and like, you know, it's too big for her. So she's like, right. she never get a new one made. So I don't think anyone ever picked up on that. But when you start to find these little nuggets of like, um, these little Easter eggs, it, it really makes it fun to include those. And also another thing I should tell you is we have an official deform lunchbox, like an old lunchbox, and it's hiding in, in Make Me a Sandwich, and it's hiding in about half of our films. That's so all, awesome. of our, all of our films going forward, if you look for it, the deform lunchbox is hidden in the, in the, sh in the show. That is, I love that. That yeah. is awesome. Very so cool. so you, you went and you did, you said about a dozen film festivals, and then I noticed, I actually, found he sent me this short film and i loved it and i sent this to about like 10 of my friends after i saw it i think i watched this seriously about like 10 to 15 times i, think I showed my parents i showed everybody my, my wow. girlfriend wow. everybody <laughs> and um i noticed it, it blew up on youtube and i know you have the youtube channel deformed lunchbox so 
I was wondering, you did you put this this film on there after you went through the uh, the film festivals, mm -hmm. and then like kind of like show that you won, you were you know you were in about twelve of them. Yep. Um, so like our, our like online, uh, platform, which is basically, we have everything we have, you know, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, right. you know, um, so that's a, that's important for us. Cause that's kind of how we grow and we, you know, build, build a platform. Right. So it's all, it's always kind of in our base to say, well, eventually it's going to end up and end up on YouTube. So we, when the festival run was over, we were like, yeah, let's, let's plan our YouTube release. And I mean, more people have now seen it on YouTube than all the festivals combined. So in a lot of ways, releasing online is your biggest opportunity these days. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you have this, this film and you have these other really cool films as well on before lunchbox, a bunch of like these shorts where they're like you were saying, same kind of format where it's like to the point, one minute, two minute entertaining. I, I remember I, I saw another one cause I clicked on it after watching. I want to see more. It was, it was called five minute data. <laughs> and it was, it was like this, I won't spoil this either, but it was like this deformed freak who would sit and uh, it would be five minute dating, five minute dating. Right. And then yep. after five minutes, the next date would go on. And, and then there was kind of a little twist in that. I don't know if you want to briefly mention that one. Yeah. You know, it, I was going to bring that one up earlier when you were talking about like filmmakers getting rejection and that movie was actually made in like 2010 when I was like 20 years old and uh, we used before Kickstarter was around, we had, there was something called GoFundMe. So right. we raised some money on GoFundMe and, and made that movie. And it did, it did get rejected to Toronto for dark and a lot of festivals. And only years later, when, when we started deform lunchbox, I kind of said, Hey, I have this short film. Why don't I just recolor it, fix some of the audio and, and post it on, on the channel. And it now has like over 250,000 views. So it's like this kind of, it's this weird, like renewed success, right? Where when we first had it, it didn't, we were like, okay, it's over, but now it's got this like second life. Right. So, I, well, I, yeah. What was That's what awesome. I, uh, yeah, sorry. No, go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. I, I wanted to mention one of your other films that I liked that I think you did during quarantine, the Frontline Workers one yeah. Yeah. with <laughs> the washing of the hands. I just, I thought that oh, was yeah. fun because was that really something you did because you were bored in quarantine? You know, yeah, but, yeah. Um, but there was a lot of quarantine film festivals. Right. Uh, and I just kind of felt like we have to do something. And uh, that's actually my sister in that movie. And it was myself, wow. my mom, and my sister who made it. And uh, funny enough, it was my mom's idea. Oh, she was like, well, what if, what if your sister washes her hands and they just, you know, she rubs them off in the sink. And, I, and I'm like, you know, what, mom, that's a good idea. And she's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And <laughs> like, oh, I was just kidding. <laughs> but um. Yeah, so we did that one, but uh, yeah, that's a fun one. Yeah, I definitely noticed the last names in the credits on that one. I was like, oh, this is his whole family. I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. As I was sitting in quarantine, I'm in my parents' house now, but I live in a pretty small apartment in Queens. So I was just like, the walls were closing. And I was like, oh, I could do something like that. That's cool. We have a lot of movies that are like, uh, I guess, just like self-mutilation movies. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's just somebody kind of like there's a one called toothbrush where it's, right. it's me just brushing my teeth until i'm bleeding yeah um, so I, I was just i wanted to ask you what was like the first film to really gain traction on your on your youtube channel and kind of like was it a bunch of them put together and then it started like the wheels started turning um, what, do you, what do you have like sixteen thousand? subscribers like 21,000 21,000 wow it's, it's grown like over the last month we've had over a million views and over 10,000 new subscribers right. so the last month has been really big for us I think the first thing that really did well is I we started doing these mashup trailers I started just trimming them like just trimming all the action trimming all the moments and uh we've now kind of me and a friend of mine we've made all these mashup trailers where it's like a it's a fake trailer for like Batman versus Jason or Indiana Jones versus Hellraiser. Was that you? Yeah. So we I made... saw. The... Oh man, you got to see this. It was yeah. amazing. I'll check it out. You yeah. co did you color grade that as well? And yeah, kind of like yeah. Like we did, we did uh, some compositing where we mixed the shots and oh. like mixed uh, the characters in the same shot, and we color graded it so they, the scenes would match. Like I try to give it as much as I. I'm I'm trying to make it so people might think it's real. It did. It looked. I really. I. It, if I was like to like just see that and I didn't know what Hellraiser or Indiana Jones was, I would have thought it was a real film. 
Yeah, you know? so it's it was, kind of it like a, it's something that I would love to watch. Like it's kind of like, you know, it's fun to edit your own footage, but when you're editing like your favorite movies, it's even more fun. So. Did you make one for me for Batman Beyond with uh, Michael Keaton and Tim Burton, like a future <laughs> one? That I'm I'm hoping for that. So. Well, I, you know, actually, these these <laughs> trailers take such a long time. We already have our next two being worked on. I don't want to spoil what they are, but the next one's coming out soon, and you're gonna dig it. It's a good mix. The two things you never you'll never guess. You'll never guess. My, Michael Myers is is one of them. <laughs> oh, nice. Who's Who's he versus? I'll let you guess. Okay. <laughs> Michael is it Myers. Pinhead? No, no, we're, it's it's a new one. We don't, we don't. It's okay. We won't reveal. Wait, yeah. soon it's to Michael come. Myers Check it on before lunchbox. It's the girl in uh, Eyes Without a Face. Maybe the inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> she has the scalpel, and she yeah, she loses. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so, Peter, I, I just want to ask you what what can we see next from your YouTube channel from Deformed Lunchbox? What 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 do we have next? I can't well, wait. We have another short film we're shooting in about 10 days from now that will probably be out by the end of September. And uh, I don't know if I, I don't want to spoil it, but oh, yeah. it's, uh, you'll be quite shocked. Everyone who's, who's read the script has been like, whoa, like, um, yeah. It, any of the short films, are you going to try to stick with the format of about like two, three minute, two to three minute? Or are you uh, I do- love that format i mean it is it's good yeah i mean i i have a lot of stuff written like we have feature length things written but i just i really like the short format so we're also trying to get like an anthology shorts off the ground like a like a uh like a tales from the crypt type thing or abc's of death or vhs one of those horror anthologies so we want to make like a deformed lunchbox horror anthology and i have the 20 shorts written and they're everywhere from one pagers to 10 pagers it's a great idea yeah I can't wait. I I also can't wait for all your your new stuff that's gonna come on Deformed Lunchbox. Every time I'm gonna watch an episode or a short, right now I'm gonna look for that lunchbox as an Easter egg. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that'll be there. It's it's in, it's in a new place. It's in making a sandwich. It's uh, it's it's in a lot of them. It's in Rachel's eyes. You can find it. I gotta okay. check it out. Peter, thank you so much for having uh coming on our show today. It's been a pleasure. Again, make me a sandwich is one of the best horror shorts i've ever seen so Thanks please so go much. check it out please go to his his website and his youtube channel deformed lunchbox thank you guys this was another episode of pod from the chris pod from the chris pod from the crib this is chris that's rob that's peter mm-hmm. we'll see you next time thank you guys see you thank guys. you